a XAML island is just a standard UWP control or even a complete UWP UI that is seamlessly composed inside of any other UI framework. No complex input problems, no threading across process issues. It just works. So inside your Windows Forms or WPF application, you can just drop in any UWP control, like Media Player, Edge-based web view, in Canvas, Maps, Swap Chain Panel, or even your own custom UI. This makes UWP controls truly universal controls. Second, developers can better tailor universal Windows applications specifically for the desktop. For example, we filled in some gaps by adding window management APIs, we improved UI density, and we now have a fluent data grid. Now, to see all this come together, does everybody want to see some code? Yeah. All right. So today I'm going to work on a WPF, a WPF application. This is for the shipping department of a furniture store. And they want to do two things to the application and nothing else. They just want to do two things. One, fix a bug. There's some bug that's been reported a bunch of times. And two, they want to modernize their processes. So they want to make some improvements in their UI. And I'm going to use XAML Islands to solve both of these problems. So let me show you the application before we go take a look at the code. So here's the application. When I start up, it has a typical thing. It's going to land on a page. This is a web page that's shared with its internal website. And the people on the internal website, they, when they updated it, they updated it to use some new features in Edge. So they use CSS Grid here. And you can see it just looks kind of wonky. And that's because in WPF, you only have access to the IE11 web browser control. But we want to update that and use a new Edge-based control so it looks correct. That's the first bug we want to go fix. The second thing is improving our workflow. So we're changing some stuff in our enterprise. And I'll show you what we do now, and it's kind of arcane. So we double-click here. That's my standard, all my, uh, you know, my invoices. I double-click on the first one. I get this data form. We print, and the way it works is we print it, we physically sign it, and we archive the piece of paper. We can't search for it, got paper to go deal with. We want to go completely digital. And at the same time, we want to make the application uh, match that experience. So I'm going to take this gray area here, this light gray, and I'm going to replace that with a XAML island. Everything from the white and above is going to stay with WPF, and I'm going to show you how they're seamlessly together. So let's hop over to Visual Studio and, take a, and uh, work on those two issues. So the first one is updating the web browser control. So I'm in my main page.xaml. I'm in my WPF project. And here's my web browser control. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to move over a web view control. Now, it looks like a WPF control, because it actually is. But inside its implementation, it's implementing a XAML island. For the most common controls, we've actually created wrappers and make it really easy to just drop it in. And you don't even have to know that the implementation is a XAML island behind the scene, because it's so seamless. So all I have to do here is give it a name. If I remember, the name was web. Get that right. So I'm going to hop over to the new application and show you that running. You can see now it's formatted correctly. I think it was 25 characters. I counted them that I had to go change in order to go now get all the rich features in edge-based web view. Pretty awesome, right? So the second thing is a little more complex. And here I'm going to directly host a XAML island. So I want to replace that entire data form. So I'm going to do this by using a UWP user control. So what I've done inside of my solution here, I've added a UWP uh, user control project. And it's just a standard one. It could be anything. It's just a UWP control. And as I go through here, I want to show you some of the new features that I was able to use as part of upgrading and using the UWP uh, uh, UI. So the first thing is, remember that UI density that I mentioned, how we've improved it? I, I, this app is pretty dense, and I want this experience to feel like it's part of that application, not different. So I'm going to use this new compact size mode. Very easy. I just changed the resource dictionary, and I've got it simply got all the nice benefits of being more compact. But it still works with touch, with pen. So it did, we didn't compromise there. We just got more density. Second thing is I want to be able to lay it out so it can automatically lay out all that nice fluid layout that we've shown with UDP. I want that in this application as well, because I want to be able to show two invoices side by side. So what I do is I use the trio of Visual State Manager, Adaptive Triggers, and Relative Panel. And that gives me all that beautiful resizing. And I'll show you that in a moment when I go and show the application. Next thing, 
I want to use features like XBind, which give me compile time binding for better performance. I'm going to use XLOAD and XPhase so that I can decide which UI loads at the right time, again, giving a more delightful experience because I've got to get access to those features. Text boxes, they just work better. Since they're UWP text boxes, they have access to all those features. They have spell checking, autocomplete, and they can take ink and do ink reco naturally right inside the text box, and I didn't have to do any additional work. Now, one thing that I'm sure you'll want, and I just want to note here, is that because we're running XAML islands inside the same CLR that WPF is running, they're both running inside of .NET Framework, I can get two-way data binding naturally. They're in the same process, in the same threading model. So now two-way data binding between the WPF controls and the UDP controls just works. It's pretty awesome when you see it running. So now that I've got my UWP control, that's my island. I'm now going to go to WPF and wire that up and tell it where I want to place it, which was that light gray area that I highlighted before. So I'm going to go, this is where the grid is that was implemented in WPF. I'm going to delete that, and I'm just going to drag in here a host control. So this is now in the same exact location I want it. I need to tell it which user control that I wanted to use. So that way I don't mistype it. You know how the typos are. I'm going to cut and paste it here. Now I've got that control. And that, again, is just the same control that I used here, just fully qualified so it knows which one to go use. Now let me hop over and show you that in the application. So let me go to shipments, just like I did before. I'm going to choose the first one. And now you'll see it doesn't really look that radically different. Well, that's the goal. I don't want to disrupt the workflow of my employee. I just want to improve the application with the minimal amount of interruption and all the benefit. So this light gray area is now running completely with UDP UI inside of this .NET application, this WPF application. Uh, note a few things. One, I can resize it. And as I resize it, it reflows. Naturally, using animations, I don't know if you looked at the code and highlight it, but I did some implicit animations. I copied the code off the web. That way you can see where things flow and things move. It's very simple for me to go do that. Another control that we've added is we actually have command bar flyout. If you looked at any of the recent versions of Office, it uses inline commanding. So I've done it right here in this text box, where if I highlight created, it automatically pops it up inline, knowing that I'm probably going to want to do something because I highlighted it. I can bold it. If I right click, it gives me a complete context menu. You can use this using XAML islands and your WPF WinForms, Win32 application, or of course the UWP, as it's just a UWP control. Now, one other thing I told you about is these text boxes. I can actually go and use my pen inside any of these text boxes. So I'm going to go click here. I'm going to put a 2. I'm going to hit OK. And we get ink reco automatically. All that multi-sense work that we have now inside of UWP with Fluent, you can go get access to. Now, we've had this uh, built into Windows for a little while, but I'm excited to announce that we're actually going to add ink analysis to the Cognitive Services Labs. So this is going to be available, so you can go use it not just inside of UWPs, but on any of your devices, just like any other Cognitive Services. So now, awesome, right? Ink analysis is a Cognitive Service anywhere. So now that I've actually you know, filled out the whole form, it's correct, I'm just going to sign that here, my little scribble that I do. You know, how many of you have better signatures? OK. Come on, guys. This is exciting stuff here. Signing. Now I hit save. This is going to save the form. But I do one additional thing. I'm actually saving a user activity. There's a great place for me to save that off into the gra Microsoft Graph, because it's a point that I may want to go search for later on, I may want to find. I also get the benefit of not just being in timeline, but also of being in set. So if I had multiple tabs and saved that user activity, as Joe said, if I closed them all down and I started them up, I would be able to pick up where I left off because I placed that as a user activity. So let me just show you how it works in timeline here. Saved off here. I'll scroll down. It's editing item 1001. Yeah, I made a, a simple name. Um, <laughs> pops me right back into the form. And I want you to note that it didn't just start the app. It deep linked. Make sure when you put user activities, you also make sure your app can handle those deep links. So you can, again, help your employees or users get right back to where they were and pick it up. Now, one thing I didn't point out when I went through this the first time is that I have these additional items up here. I have four little green cameras. One of the things we want to do to improve the product quality is make sure that we're shipping undamaged boxes and undamaged furniture. So we want to go, we're going to go add 
uh, cameras to take photos at four different points of the packaging product, packaging of the product. So then the employee who signs off here can look at those four photos and make sure there is no damage. Now, this is a great place for us to kind of help the employee. That's an additional work and it's kind of mundane. We can use machine learning and the custom vision service that Scott talked about yesterday to train and create an Onyx model to help offload some of that work that we're adding here. So let me go show you how we've gone and added uh, machine, learning, I machine learning, Windows ML, and machine learning to the application. So I'm going to hop over here to this one uh, to show you, first of all, that I created. So when I did the custom vision service, I created and produced an Onyx model from it. So that's the output from it when I trained it. So here I've imported the Onyx model. Uh, and as you've seen before, when you import an Onyx model, we automatically in Visual Studio create a wrapper class that you can go call from your code. And here's that wrapper class. Basically creates box model that input, output, and uh, evaluation functions. So I'm going to use those within my application. And I didn't have to do anything other than import it. First thing I do here is I declare my variables. I actually have no outputs here. I just have an input and an evaluation function, so I put that to null. In my loader, I just load up the Onyx model. Now, on each of the pictures, when I set that data form, I'm going to run this process ML function to go give me a score to know whether or not the photo was damaged or whether the product was damaged at any of those stages of it. So I do a simple thing is I just get the probability back. So the way it works with ML is you give it the photo and it comes back with a score telling you the likelihood. So if there's a high probability that it's broken or not broken, then I'll mark it as, you know, I'll put in you know, the little icons that show that. And the real interesting case here because this is where I want to go spend some time retraining is, if I don't know, if I don't know which was, or machine learning couldn't tell me, I'm going to mark that with a question mark and then have the employee take action, say, okay, I'll physically go look at it, and then I'll classify it. We'll take that among all the employees who are doing this and then bring that data together, put it up into Azure, and retrain that vision service to get better and better each time, ultimately making my employees more productive. So what I just showed you in this demo is three things. First, how you can use XAML Islands in your existing UI, either with our wrappers for the most common controls or directly host your own custom UI. The second is how you can log a user activity so it shows up both in timeline and in sets. And third, how you can use AI and Windows ML not just to make your applications more capable, but your employees more productive. 